Hi, I'm Mike Santora, Associate Editor for Fluid Power World Magazine, and today I am here with Chris Paschal from TTP, a division of API, to answer the question, how do I replace this heat exchanger? All right, so we have ourselves a shell and tube heat exchanger, and you have water in your oil tank, and you want to replace your heat exchanger. Most important two things are to match the two velocity profiles so that you don't destroy your heat exchanger with high velocity or lose 50% of your heat transfer by falling into laminar flow. So the way we're gonna do this is on the water side of the heat exchanger, which are your two bonnets on the ends, okay? If it goes in one side and out the other side, you have a one pass heat exchanger. If you have two ports that are six hours apart from each other, it's three, nine, 12, and six, you basically have a two pass heat exchanger, your fluid's going in half the tubes and then coming back down out the other side. If you have two ports and they are three hours apart from each other. So they will basically be in one hemisphere and two of the quadrants, okay? You have a four pass heat exchanger. It's important that you match that velocity profile. Match the velocity profile on the shell side of the heat exchanger, which is typically your oil side of your heat exchanger. So we got two choices. Uh, one is to figure out what the flow rate is going through the heat exchanger. Possibly motor displacement times RPM, or pump displacement times motor RPM would give you the flow rate going through the heat exchanger. The other way is to actually physically figure out what your baffle spacing is, which is what we're trying to do here. You could do this by taking an angle grinder and cutting yourself a little window in the side of the heat exchanger so that you can actually measure what this distance is. That is the exact baffle spacing that you want to use to keep that velocity profile in that heat exchanger. Last thing we want to do is make sure that we get enough surface area in the heat exchanger. If you have a heat exchanger that's got quarter inch tubes, you don't want to buy the same shell diameter with 3 8 inch tubes because you're going to probably lose about 40% of your heat transfer surface area. So, you can do this a couple different ways. If you know the shell diameter, you can count the number of tubes on the end. Um, my engineers will know exactly what the tubing diameter is basically by the quantity of tubes that you can put in a certain diameter. Um, another way to do it is you can look in the top ports. You can figure out exactly what your tubing diameter is. You can probably physically measure it with a caliper. Um, lastly, you might want to consider materials of construction. Um, if you're dealing with a standard oil to water application, you probably don't have nothing to worry about. If you got some crazy stuff like deionized water or Skydrol or some other kind of weird fluids, just know what those fluids are so that my engineers can put you into the correct materials of construction for that heat exchanger. But that's just about it. Thank you so much, Chris. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can visit fluidpowerworldonline.com.